Mm, yeah. First off, I'd like to uh, say to our members and any other victims out there, 2nd of March, we intend to have a question and answer session up at Stormont. Uh, it's going to be hosted by Danny Kennedy. The intention is to have uh, the four parties represented. Uh, that's the Unionist Party, the DUP, uh, the TUV and uh, the Alliance. But anyway, the idea will be to have their representatives on victims in a panel and the victims will be there to ask them questions. And let's see if our politicians can actually give the answers to them. Now we're requesting um, a representative from each party to come to it and they say it'll be in the long gallery, it'll be chaired, it'll be run properly, uh, it'll be disciplined, it'll, it'll not be a shouting match. So we'll look forward to that and anybody who are out there who wants to come to it, let us know. Uh, contact the fire office here or contact myself and uh, we'll certainly get you an invite. We intend to ask some of these other people as well who continually tell us that we need to move on. Um, we're going to ask them to come and explain uh, how simple it is, according to them, for people like ourselves to move on. So it should be a good night, it'll be an interesting debate and uh, hopefully uh, it'll be a very positive outcome from the debate. But we look forward to it and hopefully all the politicians, or sorry, all the parties will send a representative there to speak uh, on the victims' issues. The other thing I'd like to raise is come to our attention through politicians and through some of the funders who understand exactly what's going on, that OFM, DFM have got this illusion that uh, none is going on within this organisation that uh, because they have stopped our funding that uh, nothing's happening. They don't seem to understand why we're here in the first place. We come together as an organisation because we wanted to see something done for the victims. We wanted to see justice for the victims. Uh, there's a lot of stuff goes on here which uh, doesn't need to be funded and people we're doing it a long time before there was ever money available. Uh, we're not here for money. We're here to help the victims. We're here to make sure that people get justice and they find out what exactly went on over this last 35 to 40 odd years. And we will not be bought off. That is our main goal. And the people meet here on a regular basis. Like, we have 160 odd stories, and perhaps more even, on record where people have sat down, people who have no legs, people who have lost their father, in some cases people who have lost their father, their sister, uh, an uncle, uh, people who have lost four or five members of their families, people who have lost an arm or lost a leg, have sat down and told them stories. There's no other organisation has the capability to do that. And the reason FAIR is doing that is because the people in it are genuine victims. And that's what we're here to do, is to make sure that the victims are looked after. And irrespective of what, and the sooner they learn this, the better. Irrespective of what they throw at us, we ain't going anywhere. Because the Provies, for 40 odd years, tried to push us out of this part of the, the country, and they couldn't do it. We're not for sale. A lot of our people were for sale, but the victims are not for sale. And a lot of things is going on. A lot of people are getting help, uh, and especially the elderly people, but also on the issue of justice. We are going after the IRA, and we will not be content until we see some of them in court for what they did to our community. You think we're going to let that go unanswered? I don't think so. And the sooner the funders and them realise that, and the OFM, DFM, and indeed some of our own politicians, who think that we're nothing but troublemakers. Uh, moving on from that, we have a situation here where these scum are going onto the street in Lurgan to try and get 
a murder who murdered police officers who was put back into jail for breaking the law again he was out on license the key should be threw away simple as that the key should be threw away this man should not be allowed out and these people who are going onto the street calling for his release are no better they're supporters of terrorism they're supporters of a murder so they're no better than the man that they're actually talking about and we demand that the police actually arrest the organizers of this parade because they, they know who they are uh, that goes without saying and, you know we'll read in the newspapers fury uh, at this parade taking place and our politicians say a b and c well, there's no good saying something let's see you there on the day demanding that the police arrest these individuals let's see our politicians out on the front line and doing something instead of sitting in their warm offices and getting their big pay let's see us doing something about uh, these people who have been intimidating and murdering the people from our community for this last 40 odd years let's see in the front line let's see is out there actually doing something instead of just releasing an old statement now and again it's like the slab morphies and these people of the world you need to go to their doors you need to confront them you don't hear much slab morphy at the minute that's because there are people prepared to go to them confront them wrap their front door not sit in an office somewhere and ignore the reality of what's going on in the country we've seen them millions of cigarettes caught the other day and that was good work to the police and the customs but there needs to be more of it these people need to be hit in the pocket it's the only place that they understand and let me assure you that we will do everything we can to make sure that these people get hit in the pocket we have done a lot in the past and we intend to do a lot in the future and the victims we're prepared to take a stand against what is wrong and that's what we're doing we would asked our politicians to do the same to get a bit of backbone and stand up for what is right in this country but when is the last time somebody spoke out and said that something needed to actually be done towards Sinn Féin IRA and their colleagues and I'm not calling them dissidents because they're not dissidents. They're all working in conjunction with each other. And if you look at them men that was arrested with them cigarettes, them 8 million whatever it was cigarettes, but look at who they are. IRA men. IRA men. That's who they are and that's who they were. Now, why is nobody raising that issue? Why is nobody saying, well, hold on, Sinn Féin, you actually said that you supported policing and justice. Well, these are your men that's caught with these millions of pounds worth of cigarettes and remember this this is one that are caught with there's other ones that they haven't been caught with and there's other things going on like there's petrol stations you can pull into in South Armagh where you'll get your fuel 17p a litre cheaper than what they can buy at retail at now you explain that to me and I would ask the customs to explain it. There's not that much profit in a litre of fuel. So how is these people selling it at their petrol stations, at their pumps, 17p a litre, cheaper than what you can buy it anywhere in Northern Ireland? And actually, like I say, there's not that profit in it. So we've reported these petrol stations because customs and the police, and I believe especially the police, and uh, a new squad of customs men that has come on board are keen to close these people down because this money that they're making is money they're taking out of the exchequer it is money that should be going into our hospitals and into our roads and just when you're talking about roads you see they're going to build roads now in the maze to nowhere you know they're going to spend 20 million building roads around the maze well why don't they build the roads or sorry why don't they fix the roads that need fixed why don't they spend the 20 million on roads that already exist instead of creating roads to nowhere it's a bit like their policy um, at the moment it's going nowhere you know we're no farther on Sinn Féin IRA tried to destroy the infrastructure of Northern Ireland for 35 years with a bomb and a bullet they couldn't do it now 
they're doing moves with Vince Dormant, which is costing us three hundred million pound. So they couldn't put a bomb off. That would have cost us that much money. But with a stroke of a pen with Vince Dormant, they can cost us three hundred million or eighty five million or whatever. Money which does not go into the economy of Northern Ireland that is sent back to the uh, the mainland. And that's what Sinn Fein is out to destroy the infrastructure of Northern Ireland.